Oh, man, we have a lot to talk about, everybody. It's been a while. I haven't been home. I've been traveling all over the place. I got back from Capcom Cup on last Monday. Tuesday, I was home. I was ready. I got all packed up. I thanked Troy Reese for hitting me with a two-month sub. Then I was on the plane, right? That's what I did. I packed up on the plane. Go. Head up to NorCal. I was in NorCal Thursday. I did a charity stream. Friday, I went from the Facebook area up to San Francisco. And then Saturday, I did the Geico uh gaming event so i missed you guys after capcom cup capcom cup was great uh from a match perspective right i think the the matches were really 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 good i thought that this year would be japan's year it definitely was japan year uh, japan's year top three was all japan they cleaned up as clean as brap hit me with the twitch prime thanks very much anyway what are we talking about okay back to capcom cup so capcom cup happened i think from a viewer perspective Capcom Cup was cool in the sense that there was lots of good matches. Uh, I said that Japan was going to clean up. Obviously, Japan cleaned up. Top three was all Japan. We knew that that was going to happen. It was their year. They're very, 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 very good at Street Fighter. They've always been in contention to win Capcom Cup every year anyway, right? Obviously, I think everybody agrees Japan is the strongest region. Uh, but the other issues with Capcom Cup was uh, everything else. Everything else was just not great, right? <laughs> Everything else is just not great. The amount of breaks and ad slides that are required for the stream, bad, right? It was like every two matches, essentially, uh, and on the hour, they were running six-minute breaks, and then there was the crazy DJ band performance that was going on. Like, I don't know what the fuck was happening there. Um, it was just like organizationally not the event it needed to be it was not good right there were so many issues with everything that was going on even like the fact that they didn't have a schedule out for everybody that was like made sense right that you guys could just look at on the stream you were just like when the fuck is this gonna start like what the hell and for us for me i don't want to watch any of this shit either i'm trying to watch street fighter right i'm trying to watch street fighter get out of there you know what i mean did the rapper sound as bad in the audience as he did on the stream? I didn't go into the audience. I was backstage chilling. And uh, I was like, all right, well, they're doing this uh, music portion. I can't even hear it. So I'm just going to stay in here and talk with everybody about other stuff. So we just hung out. And uh, I enjoyed the weekend. I did a lot of studying for uh, this event. Yeah, Kage came out in the middle of top eight. I didn't look at my phone until after the announcement. Because I didn't want Kage spoiled for me, right? Like, I didn't want any of the news. They told me, they're like, hey, some of the stuff they're going to announce has been leaked. So if you want to see it, it's on your phone. But don't look at your phone if you don't want to see it. So during the top eight, Steve and I were like, oh, shit. Well, so I didn't look at my phone. And then afterwards, the leak or the reveal happened for everything that had already come out. I was in Obama's chat during Dell. Yeah, I opened it up because I heard he was streaming and I put send help. It was rough, dude. I can't believe how organizationally fucked up it was. And the thing... <clears throat> the thing is, if you think about it, right, like they paid for these this band to show up and they paid for this America's Best Dance Crew winner from 2000 and, you know, seven to show up or whatever it was. Right. And they had all this, but like all of that would have been better spent just having the tournament. It would have cost them less money. It would have made more sense, almost as much sense as Plague of Souls hitting me with the subscription. Thanks very much. It would have cost less money to hire these bands. Right. It would have cost less money to hire the dj it would have cost less to have the dance crew it doesn't cost very much to use a twitch prime sub like shinobi did thanks very much for the twitch prime cost you nothing right it's very easy to do would have saved all that money nobody would have been pissed about things maybe it would have ran on time so there wouldn't have been a leak with kage which would have been as amazing as strawberry mango co hitting me with the 16 months thanks very much like all of that right would have just made for a better event you know what i mean Nobody ever wants live music at a video game event, so we just want the fucking video games. It's all any of us care about. It gets it, the viewership for it. It's always going to suck. People are going to talk shit about it. They're going to say it's bad. Nobody's going to be happy, especially not Wheat Lad, who hit me with a tier one sub. Thanks very much for the two months. All of us are just so mad about it. None of us want it to happen, right? So we're just like, yeah, this shit sucks. Um, you would have saved more money. You would have made people more happy because it would have been three hours earlier or whatever. You would have had maybe not Kage being revealed or shown before it happened. Everything would have been way better, right? And you released balance patch, balance notes for the game. So halfway through the top eight, everybody's just looking at their phones, scrolling up, reading the changes while like Capcom Cup Finals is happening. Like, everything that could have gone wrong for this event went wrong. It was like extremely badly done. 
uh, in that sense, right? When you look at how the Tekken World Tour Finals worked, like, everything about it was great. They had an issue with the bracket that they went on the broadcast. They said, you know what, guys? This got fucked up. We fixed it. Great event. They did four-man commentary for the LCQ where they were jumping around, so that way the LCQ you got to see tons of matches. You know, it was a more relaxing day. We got to the finals. Big finals moment. Congratulations. Next day, you jump into finals bracket you do group stage which i think is so much better for the record group stage for um the whole tournament so that you can see where everybody ends up into the top eight right and that all is really exciting everything runs just boom 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 no musical shit no stupid shit cool beautiful theater venue everything about it was as good as god night hitting me with the tier one so thanks very much very clean tightly wrapped uh schedule boom 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 it's just video games. That's the way to do it, right? You just want the video games part. And the group stage means that you get to see everybody play. Even someone like in Capcom Cup, you can go 0-2 in six matches, right? Six matches. Three out of five. Boom, 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 boom. You're out, right? And in Tekken World Tour group stage, even if you are not going to make it out of your group stage, you winning or losing a match in the third or fourth match you play can have an impact on the rest of the tournament. So I like group stage better uh, in general, right? Anyway, uh, that's Capcom Cup. Badly done, but the matches were really good, which is always what you'd expect from an event like that, which is why you should just put the matches on and nothing else. It's always better that way, right? Always better that way. <laughs> they just wanted to make the event look good for once. What looks good is their video game on the screen. Everything else won't look good. Everything else won't look good because none of us give a shit about anything else. If I wanted to watch a DJ perform at some event, I would just look it up on YouTube or watch the, the thing. I don't watch Capcom Cup that watch whack-ass DJs, or maybe they're great DJs. I shouldn't say that. They're, I'm sure they're great DJs. But in the context of Capcom Cup, it's uh, shit's whack. I don't want to see it. And a, somebody earlier was saying that, like, I'm sure Capcom wouldn't like me saying all this. I already told them all this. I already, Of course, everybody already was like, this is whack. And they were like, yep. We know. Everybody that I would complain to about this either agrees with me or doesn't have the ability and doesn't have the ability to make it happen or it was, yeah, that's about it, right? Whoever made this decision happen, I don't know what's wrong with you. That's crazy to me. <laughs> They're like, we don't want it like this. It, it, We don't think it'd be like it do, but it is. It's something like that. It was one of those things that like, it was so badly done that I was sitting there like, watching this dj perform before top eight for capcom cup and i was like man why do i have to commentate top eight almost because like i'm a very simple guy when it comes to thinking about how this stuff works right like i'm a very simple guy when i think about stuff like capcom cup when i think about how people are chosen for capcom cup when i think about the event as a whole like it should be a celebration of the best of fighting games or the best of street fighter in this instance right should be the absolute best of what we can show for this game, right? The best players in the world should be represented in the top 32. Um, the production should be nice and tight, right? We should have a really good show format planned out. End of the year, it should be amazing. Like, we shouldn't have any of this bullshit DJ shit. We should have the best possible commentary lineup. We can't just the most talented individuals that are there representing all the different regions with all the different knowledge, mixing and matching in there to have cool... Uh, like duos or groups of people that you don't often see. Just a really well put together product. And I'm just sitting there watching this shit like, man, this is, it is so disheartening to be involved with, right? Like it was like, oh my God. But, you know, I like pulled myself out of that funk and I was like, whatever, dude. It's time to fucking do top eight, right? Like it's time. And I had a great time. And Steve and I had a really fun block, especially because we don't commentate together as much as we used to. So... Because we're always pulled in different directions, people never put us together because they're like, Tasty Steven Say Jam, they're so good together, we should split them up for 95% of the year. <laughs> it's crazy. But we finally got to do a top eight together, and uh, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. We had a couple of those moments where we we had the drift-compatible Tasty Jam shit. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> a Tale of Two Steves. Yeah, we never get to commentate together, unfortunately. I think the only big final Steve and I have done together all year is E-League, Dragon Ball Finals at Combo Breaker, and this. Three big top eights in like the entire year, right? That was like all we had done all year. Let me find this video for you guys. Somebody's going to ask about it, so I figure I'll play it for you guys. Over it. He, he had, had to, to respect it. it. Oh, the crush. 
That's gonna do it. Let's go. Oh, the backhand. You see a buffering. He's waiting for it. Goshkun wants the roll kick. Dashes up. Look for the sweep. Get off of me. Overhead. Oh, the throw. Goshkun takes it. Mm hmm. I don't know how that happens, to be honest with you. The other example. The other example is the the video I posted a while ago. The block though, and the V reversal gets Tokido out. Flash kick. Goes another boom. Another, another one. one. Another level one. I'm here. Z change in. Yo, oh, the sandwich. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. Get out of my. Oh, the oh, two. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it happens. You know what cracked me up, by the way, is the reason I posted that video again is that there was a comment that said. The only reason you guys sync up in Street Fighter V is because it's a dry game with limited option and there's only so many words you can use so people will constantly say the same thing at the same time. And I was like, but what about all the times it's happened in other games? And the guy didn't, he never responded. They're like commentators constantly say the same exact thing with the same exact time together in Street Fighter V. I was like, man. You ever just make shit up? You ever just hate something so much you just make shit up? <laughs> me too. <laughs> Go <Come> on, man. <laughs> Cracks me up, dude. Capcom Cup. We talked about that. What's the next thing? Uh, yeah, the Smash shit. Jesus, Salem's crazy. I read some of that and I thought it cracked me up. What else is uh, another talking point? Geico Finals was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you guys tuned into that. Geico is really cool. Um, a lot of money. Cool event. Geico. Really hooked up the FGC with a cool opportunity this year. I'm impressed by how many people uh, tuned into that. And uh, it was a cool chance for people to just play, you know, online. New patch, right? We got to see the new patch. The Kami and Guile players got beat up. Oh, that was sick. It felt good. I don't hate Kami or Guile players, but seeing the new patch and them struggle was pretty funny, right? Oh, the DJ chick. I didn't even really know about it until after it was over. I think that all that shit is so whack, I'm not going to go back and watch it, and I tuned it out of my mind. The thing about the Tekken World Tour prize pool is that, unfortunately, when you really think about it, right? When you really think about um, the, the way the prize pool works and stuff, you have to think that the Tekken World Tour, or even Capcom Pro Tour, or any other fighting game tour, is not as big or sustainable and doesn't have as many sponsors or other organizations putting in money to it as something like Dota or something like League or something like CSGO or any of these other companies that have bigger backers or larger marketing budgets or their on ongoing games or titles so they have a big budget. Things like CPT and Tekken World Tour marketing expenses, right? Tekken has been out for years now, if you count the arcade release. The marketing budget for that game is only going to be so big now. And if you think about Street Fighter, it's the same kind of way, right? Like, as it goes on, it's going to be a harder and harder to justify putting in such a big prize pool year after year. And I think if you asked CPT if they could go backwards in terms of scale, they'd be like, yeah, we're spending a lot of money <laughs> on prize pool. Like, there's what? It's like 7500 for first at a premiere event in CPT, right? It's a lot of money. Or is it 7500 for the top eight? I don't remember which. But you know what I mean? It's like one of those situations. So... They're spending a lot of money when it comes to prize pools for these events. And you have to, at the end of the day, justify it either with sponsors, marketing money, or some other mean like crowdfunding or whatever else you have in there. So just increasing the Tekken World Tour prize pool to $200,000 is like out of, it's out of control. And I don't think they should do that. I think there should be an increase that makes sense for the size and growth of the game, right? which is unfortunate because it would be nice if Tekken players made way more money. Obviously, I want them to make way more money, right? But you just have to think about it logically. It's the same reason as a fighting game commentator, I can't charge a million dollars per day, but somebody who does another game might be able to, right? Dragon Ball, I think Dragon Ball is in an interesting place in the sense that, like, <clears throat> the thing is that nobody really knows exactly what's happening, right? Nobody really knows exactly what's happening. A lot of people are like doomsday about it but anime ascension never really said why they canceled the event whether it was their choice whether it was toei whether it was the ip holder which is not toei it's a different company yeah the toei channel tweeted that they're not involved with stopping dragon ball tournaments i think it's pretty obvious that it's the ip holder and not toei right shueisha yeah shueisha is the ip holder small grassroots events won't be affected by this where the big issue will be is 
like summits or dream hacks or evos or uh e-leagues or geicos or any company that has to put on an event like this needs to pay for the license right you have to buy the license if you're a big enough event you're going to sell merchandise or branding or anything like that you have to purchase a license from the company to make it happen that is easy if the company just has a license available to sell like yep this is how much our license costs you give us a ham sandwich and a shoestring boom you can use our license right whatever it is um and whatever you know the the deal is with the license negotiation but when it comes to something like dragon ball which has like so many hands in there i don't know how that's figured out so i think the game will be fine and people can continue to play it at grassroots events as much as they want its involvement with events like evo and other stuff is more complicated right above my pay grade i don't think about and handle stuff like this you know this is not my uh, room to wiggle. I'm very sad about it because I've been commentating a lot to Dragon Ball this year. I like the game a lot. I play the game a lot. And it was one of the games that I was planning to do a lot of next year. If that means that it's not at a lot of big events, that's still fine to me because I'll still watch and follow and play the game. Uh, but it's just something to think about in terms of opportunities at a larger scale, right? Like uh, E-Leagues or Evos or like I commentated. Did I commentate the only Dragon Ball finals at Evo that will ever happen? Like, I don't know. I might have, right? Who knows? So, um, yeah, those events are a little bit stickier, right? Those events are a little bit stickier when it comes to figuring out what's going to happen. Yes, Ryan, a ham sandwich and a shoestring. I do drive a hard bargain. I ask for more than that. You're lucky I didn't ask for a can of tuna fish on the side. I don't even need the can opener. I'll just bang it against my head. <laughs> 